so that concept that your dad had, if I took that for myself, it would require me to audit the input I'm taking in today. So let's take a given day and I've got books available to me. I've got podcasts, I've got blogs, I've got videos, I've got an untold amount of good input in. But if I'm going to do like what you said, if I'm going to do that and wrap it up, if my purpose is to say, I'm going to wrap it up with being able to, you said, give an explanation like to a five-year-old kid. And it's interesting because I was just sitting there typing notes about that same concept. If I looked at everything that I was going to prepare a presentation, like you just talked about doing or make a case for what I just heard to showcase my knowledge. If I had to write an essay on that, first off, I'd be even more judicious with what I'm taking in because how much interesting input do we take in that we don't really care enough to have to give some essay about it afterwards. So if I'm taking it in like your dad is with the idea of this is something I'm going to impart to others, whether it's my family at the dinner table tonight, or whether it's to my employees or to my employer, to my coworkers or to into a book or a presentation, whatever it may be. I'm really going to be careful about what I am taking in. I'm really going to listen. I'm going to actively listen probably. And I'm going to pause, or if it's a book, I'm going to mark it up, which I do and take notes, active reading, active listening, take notes. And then at the end have paid attention enough, taken in uh, proactively enough, comprehending to understand enough to be able to then say, okay, here it is. Here's the essence of this, of what I just took in. And the question is, why do we not do that? Now, you know, just like you talked about, we could exercise. I'm, I, I may go on a ride today and listen to music because I, I did this the other day for my birthday. I just wanted to be in the flow. And I went out and rode for two hours with great music playing and just had an incredibly joyful time. And that was my purpose. And then today I went on a walk and I did not listen to anything because I had a certain thing I wanted to chew on, which I did for 30 minutes or however long I was walking that we, you know, so we can have some times when we're listening to a podcast and it's really interesting and fun. That's great. But again, if we're budgeting our time and knowing what our intent is and today though, I have uh, something that's important enough to me that I want to be purposeful in what I'm listening to or what I'm reading so that I get a benefit. So I did that this morning. I listened with one of my sons as we took, went to school and listened to a podcast. Uh, matter of fact, I just pulled it up here that I was recommended to listen to uh, by my dad. So my dad, who knows some of the things that I'm interested in, some of the things that I'm currently pursuing, he said, man, Kevin, based on my dad, Dan Miller, who a lot of people know, uh, based on that, you should listen to this episode. And I'll tell everybody it's episode five, 90 of the Jordan Harbinger show. So I've had Jordan on the show a couple of times, uh, really incredible guy. His podcast just got taken on by a network for somewhere in the high seven figures. I'm told, um, his interview here was with a guy named Andy Norman, and it's the search for a better way to think it's an incredible discussion on our beliefs and why we believe things. And some of the essence of it was when our beliefs are tied to our identity, we will hold on to them, grasp onto them more so than actual truth, because now it's associated with our identity. We're just going to fight for it because it's attached to us. And he talk, he's talking about how that is really being detrimental in our culture right now. Well, that is something that I've been discussing. I've been pondering and I've been questioning. And so that was sent to me. So I'm listening, listening to it to understand I'm pausing it and taking notes because it's something I want to be able to impart. I want to talk to other people, whether it's my audience, my community, my family, my guys that I meet with on Friday, because this is something that we're talking about is belief and about faith. So it's a purposeful listening uh, in that. And that is something, again, that I want to be able to understand for my own benefit and discuss with other people. It's a great muse for the things that we're taking in. And it really, to me, Tom, kind of divides the input into what am I listening to for, I'm going to say entertainment. And some people are going to balk at that because they're going to say, no, I'm really interested in that thing. If you're not listening in a way that you want to fully understand, take notes, digest, and be able to impart to somebody else or explain to somebody else, then I'm going to put it in the entertainment. Is that fair, Tom? Is that, is that too, uh, is that too much of a gap that learning or entertainment? 
Yeah, and and I, this is the challenge is when we say, gosh, you know, you should only, in, you should be intentional about everything you read and listen to, all your input, and it should only move you closer to your why, your purpose, your identified goal, unless you clearly express that it's entertainment. There's a middle ground in there, and that's this. I call it the glue, and the glue is, gosh, I love uh, – animals and animal facts and you know I like to learn about the platypus and the sugar glider and all these mm -hmm. but what does that have to do with what I do right very very little but when you start like going into these different areas just kind of on an inquisitive search it starts connecting things that you had no idea connected right it's it starts it, it builds a wider web or a wider foundation it lets you know that hey there's a lot more out there uh that you don't understand and so one of the um one of the mantras that i love is you know you don't argue to win the argument you argue to discover the truth right we get together right. to and i know with black swan events like the pandemic uh the people who are highly focused on identity mm -hmm. and who are most likely to be biased like everything's through the bias filter of what they know to be true sure confirmation bias yeah yeah they are they're the ones who have the most difficult time right and so usually uh, a lot of uh, mind games are played because uh they just play off of routines you know hey if you if you could do this or this what would you pick well, they know what you're going to pick because you've always done it. Uh, I remember one uh, thought question was, hey, you know, you've got uh, three miles left of gas and the gas station to your left is, uh, is five miles. The gas station to your right is 10 miles. The gas station behind you is seven miles. What do you do? Yeah. And it's trying to get you to pick between the three knowns when you could just keep going straight. <laughs> yeah it didn't tell you how far that one was it could be it, whichever direction left right or back you're gonna have to you're gonna have to walk right you're gonna have to ask you're gonna have to get help so why not continue forward and that's what people do is they would rather lean towards uh known unhappiness mm -hmm. and the potential of discovery yeah. because it makes them think out of it so uh, I like the idea of, hey, there's there's purpose driven knowledge that I need to digest and think through, and then there's entertainment that I probably need some boundaries around, otherwise that's going to set me back, and then there's just kind of discovery stuff that I should feel good about, just to over, and, and not necessarily that I have to to go into deep thinking about what does that mean, but just to get an understanding of of you know how how is it that that relates to everything else I already know dad always yeah. said when you add one new idea to something you've already uh know then that that's where creativity explodes okay well i appreciate that i, I think that that's a, a great middle ground of those two and as you were talking about it i i wrote down yeah just just interest personal interest uh curiosity because i heard i heard that coming out as you were talking mm -hmm. about it. You, you have some things that you're curious about you enjoy it it gives you joy and gives you inspiration as i think about that yeah i have some things that fall into that category too but then it helps me in my proactive budgeting of my day to know okay yeah how much time as you said am i going to devote to or give to I shouldn't even say devote. We don't usually devote. We just give ourselves over to entertainment, which I love that. I, I think as much as anyone else, uh, but how much of my day is entertainment? And likewise, how much learning? And to some degree, man, I can only take about so much in-depth learning too. I mean, I do have some finite aspects of my brain and intellect and it can be as, as exciting as it may be, it can be taxing. So, how, but how much am I going to learn intentionally be seeking out to learn? And I like the idea of where do I want progress and transformation in my life and how am I feeding that? And am I really digging in to learn and transform? And now you gave a third, I don't know that we have a title for it, 
curiosity, joy, inspiration, interest. I think you said the word interest uh, that is enjoyable and yeah, inspiring. I, I like creativity. It expands our creativity by exposing us to other things. Um, you know, this is a, I pulled out a book. I don't know what episode of the Ziegler show it was, but we had uh, Nedra uh, Glover Tawab. She wrote setting set boundaries, find peace. And she is a current day voice on uh, boundaries. That is an area I am looking to find transformation for my personal life. It is not the most fun thing that I'm studying right now, but it's an area that I know I need to grow in. So it's a budgeting of my day, usually in my morning where I'm saying, I'm going to, I'm going to do, you know, th this is enjoyable. This part's not, but this is an area I need to feed transformation. So I am budgeting time for that and taking notes and then looking literally at my life and go, where am I going to make changes? How am I going to make changes? It's hard work. It's not, it's not super enjoyable, but the payoff, I'm obviously looking to either achieve a desire or a goal or solve a problem. Uh, for me, I tend to think about it as problems I have created in my life by my lack of boundaries. So this is an area that I am working on to feed and I want to make, I want to chew. I've got to sit there and think about my life and think about, and I'm, I'm literally journaling, you know, back to your writing. It is a Again, I don't want to hold it up as the holy grail, the only grail, but man, it's, it's, it's one that we have. If I look at the bookshelf behind me and the one behind you, we've got a lot of journalers that have benefited from working out their thoughts, working out their ideas, chewing on these things, and then coming out with here is, are their authentic thoughts, decisions, directions that they're going to go as a result. It, 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 that is a hard way. Yeah. Coming back to your writing, that is a, that is one that, that I would say, even if you don't have a propensity for it, there's room to do that. Even if you may say, yeah, I don't like exercise. Yeah. Well, you should do it anyways. Ah, I don't really like vegetables. Ah, it's still probably best you do that. Uh, this isn't all about our personal desires and, and, and likes. There's some things that we just need to take our vitamins, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Dad was famous for saying, you don't have to like everything you need to do. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind of cool. Uh, in sales, a lot, a lot of people don't like prospecting. Hey, you don't have to like it to be good at it, but you do have to do it in order to be good at sales. Yeah. So like isn't necessarily a requirement. Yeah. Uh, we have a society and a culture that's built on happiness and liking stuff. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. Who said we had to like everything? Yeah. What we like is what we should love is the end result. And yeah. so if we get focused and take joy just in the process, and that gets us closer to where we want to go. You know, uh, the question, this also goes back to that question. What was the one thing that Zig Ziglar did that made him who he was? And it's the same thing we can all do is he just dedicated time every day to taking in new information for the purpose of benefiting someone else. Mm -hmm. And then he would simplify it put it in his own words and then share it with others. And that's really what thinking is. And he did so much of that through the written word. Um, he wordsmithed his speeches, which became the written word. And then he wrote, which became his speeches. It was kind of a give and take, but they were crystallized. But the thing that made uh, his process, his process is the, the purpose was to benefit someone else. Mm -hmm. And so um, gosh, you know, if you had a few months to live, like suddenly the doctor said, Hey, you've got a few months to live and you had kids and you wanted to leave a message that would hopefully, you know, help build a legacy after you were gone, what would you say? Right? What would you tell them? And that's a great place to start. It is right. That's a great place to start. And then what do you wish you'd have done different? And, and what, are the, what are the discoveries you've made along the way? You start really getting good at thinking and crystallizing those things. And then it, then it has other opportunities, right? It, it can grow in so many different directions. Taking that on the responsibility to impart. <laughs> I, I don't think anyone who's listening to this show does not feel that and want to embrace that to some degree. But if we look at that as, yeah, that's what I saw. That's why I see the example of your dad is he felt the responsibility to impart and he put the work in. So am I doing that for my self, my family, my 
audience, my friends. Uh, and man, I want that from them as well. I'm so grateful for the amount of time that you take to study and learn and impart to me. Uh, I am a grateful recipient, Tom. Uh, so yeah, it's a great topic. We'll keep talking on this on, are we budgeting time to stop the next input opportunity and taking time to digest it, to think on it so we can impart it to others and take action on it ourselves. Thank you, brother. Good stuff.